Miss Adams, you have partnered with our department since 2015 when York County piloted our very first domestic violence program. You've attended many events um, in honor of domestic violence and supporting the cause. Can you tell us who your daughter was and what happened to your daughter? Yes, um, my daughter was Sharika Adams. Uh, she was 24 years old and even as a young child, she was very focused and she knew what she wanted in life. She was very determined, pretty much outspoken. Words that would describe her would be trailblazer, trendsetter, go-getter. You know, she was just full of life, very vivacious, very friendly, and she um, was very beautiful in my eyes, inside and out. And she was um, introduced to Ray Carruth at a party, a summer pool party, and they just immediately had an attraction towards one another. So much so that she uh, even took, took Ray to meet her dad on the first time that they met. And we all thought he was very charismatic and a fun person. Uh, their relationship was very rocky because Sharika was not the only person that he was dating. And with Sharika's bold attitude, she did not want to be number one in his life. She wanted to be the only one in his life. So that immediately sparked some conflict. Um, the signs in their relationship that things were going a little off is that, you know, he was very controlling. He wanted to always keep up with her and, and um, just really wanted to control her friends, even what she wore, places she went, that kind of thing. And um, so she, uh, they had an on and off relationship. They broke up for a while and got back together and she became pregnant. And when she became pregnant, he wanted her to have an abortion. And when she did not agree to that, um, he plotted to have her murdered. And um, the plot went awry several times, but on November the 16th, uh, he did get someone to um, follow him in a car follow Sharika in, in her car. They went out on a date. Of course, they were going to the movies that night. And um, he couldn't drive her there, so she followed. Uh, she was following him, the car was following her, and they pulled up beside her and shot into her car five times. Four of the bullets hit Sharika, one in the neck and three in the torso. And she was still so resolved on saving her baby that she was able to make a phone call and say, well, first of all, she was able to drive to a nearby neighborhood at least a quarter of a mile and turn into uh, a gentleman's uh, driveway. And she was able to call 911 to let them know that she had been shot and that she was seven months pregnant and she was really working uh, her main thought was to save her baby. Um, as you have come through York County and you have spoken at many other events in our department and in our county, you've talked to offenders. What impact do you hope to have on our domestic violence offenders to help facilitate behavior change? Uh, the impact that I want to leave with them, number one, with the offenders, is that you need to think before you take an action because your thoughts really do determine your destiny. And it seems so simple, but the things that you're thinking, you just don't wake up one day and decide, oh, I think I'll murder someone. These things start as thoughts and then they form your words. Your words create your actions. When you don't understand why you're doing certain actions, they become habits, and you just do things habitually, and then that becomes your character. And then lo and behold, your character 
becomes your destiny. So I would say, watch your thoughts. Watch the people you associate with. And um, know that you have a choice in what you do. You know, you may be in an outrage of anger at the time. I've heard the old saying, you know, just count to 10. I thought that was so trivial. But sometimes if you just stop to take a breath and think of what the end of your action would be before you take the action and realize that what you do not only affects you, like with our case, it affected my grandson. My grandson has cerebral palsy now. His life is forever changed because of one person's actions to shoot somebody. And our program is currently in 13 counties mm -hmm. and we have 29 domestic violence agents. Mm -hmm. However, we have other agents in our department mm -hmm. that serve DV offenders in other counties around the state. What message might you have to any of those probation and parole agents serving domestic violence offenders? Hmm. Well, number one, I'd say I'm so proud to hear how the program has really grown. And uh, I would say, you know, don't go in just looking for physical abuse. Because domestic violence is so much more than physical abuse. Um, you may not see it when you're on a home visit, but just pay attention to their words again, what they're saying, how they even treat animals. Uh, if they're trying to belittle people in situations, um, these are signs of domestic violence that my daughter encountered, the emotional abuse, um, wanting to control the people that um, my daughter hung around, the things that she wore. And I would also say uh, to the, um, to the uh, agents, keep an open mind because everybody deserves redemption. One thing in your history does not have to determine your whole destiny. You can make a change and it's not too late if you still have breath in your body. You can still make a change, even if you've even done the most horrendous acts like murder. You still can be redeemed, and everybody deserves that chance to be redeemed. And I would say, uh, don't just label them and put them in a box and, and just think their life is doomed. Give them the opportunity to, uh, to redeem themselves. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Adams and Chancellor Lee. You guys are wonderful partners in this endeavor to make change. We appreciate you, and you are a treasure for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for having us.